Monday, June 17. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. The Board of Venezuela's oil and gas company, Petrolis de Venezuela, has filed a lawsuit over Jamaica's takeover of the 49% stake in local oil refinery Petrodrum. This confirmation came from Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith on a Sunday night. Jamaican attorney Michael Hilton, QC, is representing Pedeveza, Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido, who styles himself as a legitimate president of the country, recently appointed the ad hoc Pedeveza board and has asked the Jamaican government to stop the expropriation of the petrodrum refinery. He wrote the Prime Minister Andrew Holness, stating that, quote, only the legitimate government of Venezuela under the control of the National Assembly can represent the interest of PDVSA in Jamaica, end quote. However, in response, Minister Johnson Smith replied, quote, the government of Jamaica now owns the shares of Petrodrum in its entirety. We passed legislation in order to give this effect, end quote. Jamaica owns 51% of shares in the Petrodrum refinery. In February, the Senate passed legislation clearing the way for the government to acquire the 49% stake in the refinery that Fedeweza acquired in 2006. In January, Guaido, the leader of Venezuela's opposition-controlled National Assembly, declared himself interim president, arguing that Nicolas Maduro's re-election last year had been illegitimate. Guaido has since been recognized by more than 50 countries, including the United States and most of Latin America. But Maduro retains the loyalty of most of the military and important allies, such as China and Russia. As stated by Prime Minister Andrew Holness earlier this year, the Jamaican government does not recognize Guaido as the interim Venezuelan president, though some 50 nations, including the United States, does. But neither has the government recognized the re-election of Maduro. Guaido's representatives abroad have fought efforts by creditors of Venezuela's highly indebted government to seize foreign assets belonging to PDVSA. Prime Minister Andrew Holness told the House of Representatives in February why the government has moved to buy the Venezuelan stake in the aging Petrodrum refinery. The inefficient operations going, then what it would translate into, Mr. Speaker, would be higher prices for fuel, or if the government doesn't want to expose the consumer to higher prices, it would have to subsidize, inevitably, Subsidies or tax breaks would mean that the taxpayers would have to pay more taxes. So whichever way you cut it, keeping an inefficient refinery will cost the taxpayers of Jamaica more. The ultimate result, the ultimate result has been that Jamaica's energy security has been compromised by delay and inaction. We now need to assess and redefine the refinery's future, and this can only be done by retaking control. The upgrade had been delayed for many years and had become even more uncertain with the economic downturn and political instability in the South American country. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, is urging greater central bank supervision of lending institutions as the Jamaican government moves to support private credit expansion. Following its staff visit last week, the IMF mission team said the reduction in the cash reserve requirements this year and the successive policy rate cuts to 0.75% should support private credit expansion. However, it said enhanced central bank supervision and risk management practices at lending institutions can be critical to ensure careful assessment of risks to maintain financial stability. Credit extended to private sector businesses and households grew by 15.2% over the 12 months to March this year higher than the 13.4% observed at December 2018 and the 13.8 percent at March 2018. The central bank has been making policy rate cuts to increase the pace of expansion in private sector credit. 
Vice President of Marketing at the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, Dampro, Gabriel Heron, says the Jamaica Diaspora Conference now in the way is an excellent opportunity to connect diaspora investors with local businesses. The panel discussion is happening today with the panelists discussing the pathway to economic growth as well as investment opportunities for the diaspora in key sectors such as energy, technology, business process outsourcing, and stock exchange. The discussions are being led by President of Jampro, Diane Edwards. Mr. Heron said the diaspora is kept informed through Jampro's offices in New York, London, and Toronto in terms of projects and particularly export opportunities in Jamaica. Meanwhile, the Vice President of Marketing noted that Jampro is looking at developing a platform that will enable and improve the ease at which diaspora members and potential investors can set up and start a business in Jamaica. Outdated cameras installed years ago as part of the rollout of the surveillance project Jamaica Eye will be replaced. Senior Director in the Major Technology Transformation Branch at the Ministry of National Security, Arville Grant, says several cameras were installed in public spaces prior to the launch of Jamaica Eye in March last year. Pointing to Maypen and Mandeville, he said CCTV programs were launched in 2008-2009 and those are being changed in time for the full rollout of the program by September. He informed JIS that there are currently three primary phases of installation with a focus on areas in St. James, St. Catherine, as well as Kingston and St. Andrew. Jamaica Eye is part of an island-wide network of camera surveillance systems designed to increase the safety of all citizens. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says a visa waiver agreement is to be signed implemented between Jamaica and Guyana. Holness said the foreign affairs ministries of both countries have been mandated to negotiate and conclude the agreement. I'm pleased to recall that Jamaica and Ghana have signed an air services agreement and we discussed today ideas about how to utilize that instrument to advance our goal of deeper engagement. As we endeavor to further deepen the relationship between our peoples and nations. The President and I have mandated our Ministers of Foreign Affairs to negotiate and conclude. And I am happy to say that this has happened very speedily <laughs> because uh, I will allow the President to give that good news. <laughs> but the mandate has been effective. President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado, arrived in the island on the weekend for a two-day official working visit. The statement followed bilateral talks between both leaders. The discussion between the Prime Minister and the President also included cooperation in other areas such as mining, sports and culture, as well as tourism, education and training. President Akufo Ado welcomed what he termed as a step in the rekindling of relations between both countries. We have these historical and cultural ties. We also have the potential of building on those ties important economic relations, trade and commercial relations. And in order for our two countries to get maximum value and benefit from the ties that are between us, it is important that we take advantage of those ties to build these strong economic relations. There are lots of areas of possible engagement that we have talked about this afternoon, and the decision has been made on our, both our parts that the Ghana-Jamaica Joint Commission for Cooperation that has been dormant for some time is going to be reactivated, hopefully this year, if not as quick, as early as possible in the first quarter of next year, so that the various... President Okufa Aro's visit forms part of a Caribbean tour to promote the Year of Return, Ghana 2019, which is a major landmark marketing targeting campaign. 
which targets African American and diaspora markets to mark 400 years of the first enslaved African arriving in Jamestown, Virginia. The Justice Ministry has announced that they will begin to engage Jamaican children as they prepare to roll out the Child Diversion Program island-wide. According to the Justice Ministry, the purpose of this program is to establish a formal framework for dealing with children in conflict with the law throughout the criminal justice process, ensuring that detention or institutionalization is a measure of last resort in accordance with the Convention on the Rights of the Child. A Child Diversion Act was passed in August 2018, and the Ministry of Justice says it's now ready to implement the program under the Act. The program is to be rolled out by November. Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck, who gave the opening remarks at the first sensitization session last Thursday at the Courtyard Marriott Hotel in New Kingston, said the country's children are under siege in far too many communities. He added that the government will be setting up parish diversion communities or committees in every parish and that the child diversion policy will be a game changer. The United Nations Children's Fund and the National Integrity Action have collaborated with the Ministry of Justice to roll out the program. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says data from the Planning Institute of Jamaica indicated that fathers are becoming more involved in their children's development. He said this while addressing the Jamaica National Family Day held on the lawns of the office of the Prime Minister on June 16. The event was held under the theme furthering healthy families with fathers. Mr. Holness noted that the dynamics of the role played by mothers and fathers in the lives of children are changing in a positive way. Mr. Holness appealed to other fathers to recommit to becoming more involved in the lives of their children while ensuring that, quote, they don't deviate from that right path, end quote. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister said his administration is committed to preserving the institution of the family, quote, as we understood it and our parents understood it, end quote. The event, held under the patronage of the wife of the Prime Minister, Member of Parliament, Juliet Holness, saw the participation of some 250 Jamaican families. And speaking of increased involvement of fathers in the home, the PPCJ team took to the streets recently to hear from Jamaicans their opinion on the role of the father, even as the world celebrated Father's Day on Sunday. Alright, I enjoyed buying her stuff, them um, taking care of her, like playing with her and all those things, you know. So um, as a father, I make sure that my responsibility is to ensure that she is make everything for her, get everything for her done, and so on. Help out mommy with changing her and so on. So I mean, that's a father's job. The role of a father is to take care of his family and prepare for for, for his kids and bring them up in the right way and don't beat him wife and all them things and be a nice man a good a good a good gentleman the role of a father is taking care of his children the role of a father is somebody that look out your child, take care of your child, be there for your child. When a child needs the most, support the child. Make sure everything is okay about your child. I remember father is a, father is a person who is to take care of their child until, whenever. Because you go and get that child. So you are supposed to be there for that child through thick and thin. Not only when they are small, but also when they are big. TLC tender loving care they must know that their dad is always there for them well a role of a father you know you have to just do what you can do and help where you can help you understand me and all the while I have it uh, it's not a, a tone we sell so sometimes coffee sometimes tea 
this week you sell something, next week you must sell something. So for you sell something, you can give it, give it, give it, do what you can do and make the youth feel good. You understand? Without the father, the, the mother can't have a baby. So the father, I feel like they don't recognize the father them all the while. So now for big up the father when it comes to Father's Day. First of all, you say father, for play an important role when it comes to them youth. You have someone threw the baby mother left them and gone. Them youth that and I want to look out for them youth. But you see me, me play a good role in my youth them life. Me play a mother and father role. Look out for them from them my youth. Come right up till them big. I know my last youth are 18 year old. I mean still take care of her the same way. All when she reach a hundred. A lot of things for my youth, you know. You hear that? Example, I mean set me out at school, me response for graduation, me response for school fee, all these things. So I play a father role because my when me was young, my father take care of me, you know. My father do a lot for me. So I do the same back for my kids them. Well, in my opinion, the role of a father if you just look out for him kids them. That's why them grow up old, them can't look out for you back, you understand? Because most youth, you have to really look out for them good because not them time, you know, you them now stay in one place. No care what you do to them, they still change in time, you know? So, like that, that from to your youth, or the rest of the person youth, just want them to come up good at all times. In regional news, a Jamaican man and a female Trinidadian police officer were held with drugs at the Piarca International Airport on Saturday. It's reported that the police woman, a special reserve police officer attached to the mounted branch of the Trinidad police, was reportedly stopped and searched while attempting to board a flight at the airport. The unidentified Jamaican man was also preparing to board the flight when he was stopped and searched. The two were searched and a quantity of drugs strapped to their bodies were reportedly found. The quantity of drugs found was not disclosed by the Trinidad police. It's not clear if they were traveling together. They were arrested and taken into custody. In sports, as Jamaica prepares to host the first ever CONCACAF Gold Cup match in the Caribbean, the Jamaica Football Federation is asking for the public's compliance in allowing a smooth running event with maximum attendance. Jamaica will host a Group C doubleheader at National Stadium on Monday with the home side down to face Honduras. In the other match of the day, El Salvador will tackle Curacao. JFF said the reggae boys and senior coach Theodore Whitmore are committed to making the occasion an eventful one. The Federation reminded that tickets will not be available at the stadium on the day of the matches, but can be purchased at all advertised outlets. JFF also encouraged patrons to come out early and wear gold. Meanwhile, the police have issued a number of restrictions for patrons attending the event. Prohibited items include firearms, explosives, drugs, offensive weapons, walking type stick umbrellas, flags with sharp poles or sticks, selfie sticks, frozen water and beverages, large water coolers, aerosol sprays and firecrackers. That's the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. Pleasant viewing.